All right. Uh, this is episode three of Hackers in Hearthstone. Uh, today we have Chris with us, um, and we're going to be talking about uh, kind of post-grad research, and specifically, what is your research again? Uh, I guess games research would be a good way to describe it. Uh, programming languages and AI techniques for game design and generative art. All know. sorts There's of... There's a lot of words. <laughs> amazing and complicated things that you can do with code and sort of like it seems more like the creative side of what people normally consider computer science research. Yeah, a lot of the field that I've been getting into recently is what's called computational creativity. So people who are interested in like bots and algorithms and stuff that can generate things we normally think of as human creative artifacts. <laughs> All right. Um, let's start a game. I want to challenge you. Oh, wait. Okay. I can't challenge uh, you yet. Are you still that? working on a deck? Uh, no, I think I got it ready. Okay. You good? Yes, I yeah. can challenge you now. I'm going to have to be looking down at my phone a little bit. Hopefully that's okay. That's fine. Yes, except. As long as you can hear what I'm saying, that's all good. Yeah. Um, I didn't build a crazy deck. I'm not playing with any gimmicks today. Okay. Um, but I am going with a custom deck. Um, All right. So we get to see what that is. And the question I ask everyone, which sometimes mm -hmm. they have an answer for and sometimes they don't, is mm -hmm. if you were any Hearthstone card, what Hearthstone card would you be? Yeah, I saw you ask other people that, so I prepared. Um, I would be the, the pint-sized summoner. Um, the pint-sized summoner. Yeah, and that's the one that, like, she costs like two or three or something like that, and uh, then it, she makes every, the first minion you play every time cost uh, one less. Is there any particular reason why you would be the, the pint size summoner? I, I think it's, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but I think it, it accurately captures my personality somehow. <laughs> and my size, my stature. <laughs> That's true. Um... Oh, wait, I won't distract you while you're picking your cards. Yeah. And I'll start throwing more questions at you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you're playing a druid. Yeah, this deck is kind of hit or miss. We'll see. <laughs> My deck is no gimmick, straight up, just like, I was like, these cards sound like they make sense together. And so yeah. we'll see how Yeah, that could be works. the best way to go a lot of the time. It, it's, it could be really terrible for me or really good. Um, your card backs. What? Oh, my card backs. That's from yeah. pre-ordering Overwatch. Oh, cool. Um, okay, so your research. Can you want to get in like more details as to what exactly you're researching right now? Or yeah, sure. So I have uh, kind of a few projects going on. The main one that I've been working on um, is with the uh, is with the Expressive Intelligence Studio at UC Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. and it's a game generator project, so it's one of um, several research efforts ongoing recently to uh, basically generate games from scratch, like either by, by making a library of mechanics or by specifying um, a really restricted domain, like uh, collision, like things colliding into each other and stuff happens when things collide, um, then like have an algorithm generate a game according to some constraints. That's interesting. Like, because, yeah, that's something that we formally think of as being an entirely creative act that only humans are capable of. But... Right. So, you know, what are your main challenges in doing that kind of research and generating that stuff? Um, well, I don't know. A lot of the, the challenge in it has been paring down the space of possible things that we could be generating into something that's like both expressive but also reasonable and tractable. Okay. Um, yeah, it, like there, there are a lot of, uh, so there is like a lot of prior research in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, oh man, I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> Um, See, I got lucky in that I randomly got a taunt, so... Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, so are your card backs cupcakes? Yeah, I think or so. Like I think they're the, um, like, 
I think they're from last year at some point. I don't remember. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a pretty big problem space. Um, and a lot of people have worked on it previously by using uh, methods like evolutionary uh, generation, which is this practice that's like um, roughly inspired by genetic evolution, where you, you like generate an artifact or generate a whole bunch of artifacts according to some random seed, um, evaluate it based on some metric, like uh, you know, for um, for card games or something. You might say like, I want my card game to be balanced, so I don't want there to be a particular advantage for player one versus player two to go in the card game. So I'm going to run a bunch of random simulations of the of the card game that I've just generated, and if it meets that balance criteria, then um, I'm going to keep it in the next uh, population set and regenerate with that. And you throw in some like random mutations sometimes, and um, uh, then like kind of eventually narrow in on something that fits the criteria that you're searching for. Um, but that is not really at all the, the approach that we're taking, so I kind of don't know why I'm talking about it, but... Um. <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting approach in general. Um, yeah. But I guess I feel like if you have a computer doing that many iterations of different things, you could potentially come up with something that's way more balanced than, like, something a person would come up with, because... Yeah. Um, like, speaking of Hearthstone, like, Blizzard relies a lot on the feedback that they get in order to, like, balance the game and stuff, as well as just, like, they'll release something and then later go back and be like, okay, we need to change this and modify it. So yeah. they're getting way fewer generations of, like, and they're, like, manually changing it rather than having this, like, evolutionary flow, but... Right. Yeah, so, and this is the kind of thing where you would definitely do it kind of offline, like before releasing a game. Like, I'm, I'm specifically thinking about a particular research project where someone did this for board games, just generated tons of two-player board games, and eventually kind of curated the set and found one that seemed good and marketed it and sold it. And it was like the first computer-generated commercial board game. Uh, this was Cameron Brown's uh, Ludi game engine. And this has kind of inspired a lot of people in the digital games, you know, area to think about whether they could do something similar for digital games. That's really cool, actually. I didn't know about that. Uh, so this is post-grad research, correct? That you're doing? Yeah, right that's right. Yeah, this is all fairly new. Like, I've been on the project for a few months now. Um, do you have any suggestions for people thinking about doing post-grad research or even grad school at this point? Um, yeah, so I, I guess, like, my first thought on that is just to be careful about kind of reasons for getting into it. Um, I, I kind of got into research straight out of undergrad, and I think it's turned out to be a reasonably good decision for me, um, just on the basis of research is something that I enjoy doing more than I could really imagine doing almost anything else with my skill set. Mm -hmm. um, doing software, you know, software development and whatnot being probably the closest alternative for me. Um, and it's amazing to have so much freedom in what you get to work on and to pursue, uh, you know, artistic, artistically inspired projects. Um, oh man, the freaking Echoing ooze. I, <laughs> <laughs> I loved it, so I wanted to put it in there. It's a pretty fun. Yeah. Ah, it's just so slimy. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say that, um, you know, like, a career in research is, is uh, like, something that I'm happy to be pursuing right now, but it is definitely not without its sacrifices and massive trade-offs in terms of your, you know, time, energy, um, financial earnings, and so on. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, this will be useful. Ooh. <laughs> Get 
rid of all these. Rid of this. Slimes. <sighs> oh man. Okay, and let's also do this. But yeah, um, for anyone who is interested in kind of getting in, uh, going to grad school, um, the trajectory from industry is a lot different than it is from undergrad, as far as I can tell. And I don't have a lot of experience with the latter. Um, for undergrad, if there's anyone who's like in undergrad watching this, um, definitely the most important thing is to try and get some research experience before you go to grad school, and you know be on the lookout for not just opportunities at your own university, but like. Um, REU's so-called research experience for undergraduate programs, things like that the NSF runs, um, are all very useful opportunities for that. So you mentioned the methodology for a different project. What exactly is the methodology for what you're researching right now? Um, and like how it generates these uh, last. <laughs> I'm gonna lose. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I've only got one minion out. Does not look good for me. I've got a lot more cards. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, so, um, so the methodology that we've been using, well, that, that really I've been pushing for, because this is my background, um, is thinking about representation languages as programming languages. Um, let's see, how to explain why that's relevant. Like, um, thinking about the way that we express our mechanics. Uh, the thing, like the artifact that we're generating is a game, it's got mechanics in it. Um, what the hell is that? Oh. <laughs> No. It's like my one gimmicky card I have in this. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so what do you mean by representational languages? Do you just strictly mean like the language that you use to um, like refer to the mechanics inside the game? Is that the representational language? Or? Yeah, exactly. So there's like, you know, there's kind of like generation at the level of code, um, which is obviously uh, like a bigger problem than we really know how to solve. Oh, oh, oh wait, can I do this? So many um, yeah, so like trying to solve code, uh, so like coming up with a program um, that embodies a certain specification is the problem of uh, program synthesis, which is in general a very hard problem. And we don't want to solve general program synthesis. Mm -hmm. um, so instead, we're trying to, uh, but we're, we're, but I'm still kind of approaching it that way in the sense of, um, like, so instead of trying to solve general program synthesis as in outputting code in a general purpose programming language, um, I'm thinking about uh, generating code in a much more restricted language of our own invention that is limited to the extent that you can reason about it to say like, okay, a game expressed in this language has certain properties that are relevant for the sake of game design. Um, oh, no. So, uh, so like, so basically like having an intermediate language that's above the level of like a C++ program implementing your game um, helps you be able to look at the representation of the game and make some uh, like prove something about it, like that it embodies a particular characteristic, like that there's some kind of combat rhetoric, let's say, in the game. Um, but so that seems extremely challenging, even with like that simplification of like instead of generating C plus plus code, now you're still trying to generate something that's extremely complex in what it's trying to represent. Yeah, right. So it's still so we're still trying to represent something. Um, uh, we're still trying to uh, we're still trying to represent like a broad class of games, right? Like not just um, collision mechanic games or uh, strategy or like real time strategy games. You know, like like something that's a, a sort of 
broad and unconstrained um, set of available game mechanics. But we want to be able to reason about those mechanics with respect to high-level design constraints, like this game should involve contemplation or time pressure, or it should fit into a narrative in a particular way. Um, now I'm going to you. Yes. <laughs> Game over. Well played. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know if we have time for a second game. Should we try a second quick game or? We could try it. We could do a, a basic deck game. I'm actually kind of curious how I would do with a basic deck. Okay, let's do a basic deck game so we can continue our conversation. Sure. Um, let me challenge you again. This is really hard, by the way. I'm having a lot of trouble, like, keeping my mind on the conversation while also thinking through moves. <laughs> it is difficult, but I was having a hard I wanted to think of a game, and I was trying to think of a game that wouldn't require too much attention, but, you know, it's, it's hard no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll try Minecraft sometime. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so your research sounds super amazing. Uh, is there anything really interesting or awesome about it do you think like is worth sharing that people might not even think based on what you've mentioned before? Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess the thing that um, the thing that really excites me about the kind of research I'm doing, not just this particular project, is the idea of making tools that help people make things and also making things that make things autonomously. Um, like the, uh, the, the slogan of the procedural generation jam that happens every November, my cook runs it, um, it's pretty cool. Uh, the slogan of that is, is uh, make something that makes something. And I love that because it's like a perfect summary of all of my interests. <laughs> um, it's make something uh, that makes something. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of like magic, you know, like tell, like teaching computers how to make um, a story or a level or a set of game mechanics or something. It's like, um, it, it, it's fun to watch that happen and to like push a generate button over and over again um, and just like see your algorithm surprise you with, <laughs> <laughs> with things that you have come up with. I guess that is always like the fun part about kind of playing around in that space is being surprised by things that you're actually like, you've created the means to create a thing, but suddenly it's like going off and has like a life of its own and doing something right. totally different. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I always tell the story of when I worked on the Star Wars gift generator is that the very first gift it generated was of Obi-Wan pulling off his hood and saying, hello there. And I was nice. just, I lost it because that was hilarious. And that's nowhere near as like creative or interesting as like kind of taking a set of things and like generating something. But it's that mm -hmm. hilarious like first interaction with my bot that was just right. like, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I have a huge amount of respect for bot, uh, bot makers. I think like chat bots and Twitter bots are extremely interesting and full of fun <laughs> stuff. I don't know. No, that was very articulate. Um, I feel like, though, if they had your, your knowledge set from, like, the kind of research you do, we could see some, like, really just, like, weird things kind of happening with the bots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that, well, like, one of the things that I would really like to see happen and maybe make happen if I get a chance to in my career is to make um, a higher level language and interface for making things like Twitter bots. Uh, because I think like it's a it's a fantastic medium and it, and it could be a lot more accessible than it is like currently I think the um, uh, currently like the, the sort of approach uh, that is most common is like download a you know Python library or something. Um, well, there is one really cool exception to that, which is one of one of my colleagues, one of the grad students at UCSC. Um, has this little grammar language called Tracery. Uh, this is Kate Compton's language, and it's completely amazing uh, because it is a very accessible interface to um, authoring grammars. 
which are just little, like, yeah, like uh, ways of easily generating strings um, mm -hmm. based on rules. And, uh, and that hooks into a Twitter bot. Um, somewhat, uh, George Buckingham wrote a like interface from tracery to Twitter bot, so you can basically just write a grammar and then hit a button, and it makes a Twitter bot that tweets from that grammar every so often. That's awesome. And like more stuff like that, like more expressive languages, ways that you could program your bots to like respond to or fave or retweet things um, based on interaction from other Twitter users. Uh, I think it would be pretty interesting. So kind of putting Microsoft's Twitter bot to complete shame with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I have not actually been keeping up with that, other than the other than the <laughs> harassment. Like, I have no idea what the tech is under that. Um, I'm not sure what the tech is under. I'm not even sure they actually mentioned it. Um, I do know it does use some of their facial recognition tech. Mm. Um, because it was uh, finding faces and things. Um, I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I don't know. You have some way of triggering this death rattle stuff. Oh, uh, not yet. <laughs> Soon. Uh, I don't know. Oh, no. No. That's, that's not good at all. Um, so I have a question about like the generative stuff. Sure. Is, is creativity based on an algorithm able to be distinguished from creativity based on a human? Like, does it get to a point where that's sort of indistinguishable? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's pretty closely related to Turing test type of questions and other sort of like, how do you evaluate AI questions that have been around in the, um, re in these research communities for a while. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm not a very good philosopher, so I don't have very good <laughs> answers to that. Uh, I think it, it's always, I mean, so far, I feel like most of our efforts are distinct, like distinguishable, um, that algorithmic output is going to be distinguishable from human output. Um, but I don't view that, like, I don't necessarily view that, view closing that gap as a goal. Like, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think that the point of algorithmic creativity or computational creativity is to be, like, as good as a human. I think, um, algorithms have their own kind of beauty that is worth appreciating as an art form. Um, like, I don't think, I mean, I don't know, I guess I, I would... Yeah, I wouldn't think of these things as like trying to replace like actors or authors or um, you know game designers or anything like that. I would think of them as as augmenting and helping like augmenting human creativity and uh, I didn't do that. Uh, helping people like I don't know. what. <laughs> Oh, um, that's actually fine. Uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, can I kill that? I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I like the idea of treating algorithms themselves as, like, a work of art on their own. Right. Yeah, because, like, I, I feel like um, there is a certain botness to the way that Twitter bots talk or like that Markov bots or, or mm -hmm. other kind of similar algorithms um, to the way that they talk and it's like an interesting thing to play with. Like you can learn, if you, if you as a human know more about the algorithm going on un underneath it, then you can um, interact with that thing in a richer way. And sometimes that algorithm is like deliberately obscured by the fact that it's kind of trying to seem human. but. Um, I don't know, it feels kind of like a game in some way. I mean, I, I definitely do think we're still kind of like playing games with that sort of like base interaction. Like it is a game to try and fake and pretend to be a person. But like, yeah, I, I do like the idea of like the beauty in the algorithm. Like even from like 
bad coat sometimes I'm like blown away with how gorgeous it is and like the way yeah. it like kind of sidesteps what it should be doing right right <laughs> like that's actually a really creative approach that I wouldn't have thought of but yeah it's an interesting manifestation of like what the human who was who wrote it was thinking oh no I wasn't even paying attention what did you do there oh you <laughs> I'm still confused. fireball oh no you're dominating me these two uh, names not here. really I don't I don't even know what's left in this basic deck <laughs> I guess that's part of the fun of playing with the basic decks. Yeah, like, I, I've never you have no idea what's so in there. I have no idea what to expect. Sometimes I like building random decks and playing with them. Like, when I'll start with a custom deck, and then I'll just delete everything and hit done, and it'll automatically fill the deck with stuff, and then I'll just play with what that oh, is, and not even look idea. at what it is. Yeah. It's really you're, you're, fun. You're using generativity and Hearthstone to totally. enrich your experience. Bringing it back around. I kind of feel like that generativity is kind of like it's like a fascination right now in yeah. the technology world because we finally have gotten like really good. At right. It. Um, yeah, yeah, especially with all of the deep learning stuff where they're basically just like, oh yeah, this algorithm works for literally everything. <laughs> like we don't know why it makes the choices that it makes, which is like my personal criticism of that kind of stuff is like I am more interested in algorithms that can kind of explain their work and tell you why they made certain choices. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, they work extremely well. And that's pretty cool. Yeah, and that's that's always really, really interesting to me. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> I'm just, uh, like, jerk. Yeah, I can't let that live. <laughs> <laughs> No, I took fair. the eight health flash. <laughs> Doing my best, and I have no cards. Um, no, this isn't going to do much good. But yeah, like I think the generative stuff in general is like really um, sort of popular right now, but uh, we're not seeing anything more complex than just like here's some like generative stuff. Um, which is why I kind of like the idea of kind of taking it a step further and having it kind of create this like interesting end result that you could potentially do something with. Because a lot of the generative stuff right now is like, it seems more like toys than actual like creating yeah, things. Right. It's like, oh, you can make your, you can like merge your face with a dog's face or something. <laughs> like, that's cool. But yeah, like what does it enable you to do after the fact? Oh man, I should have saved some cards. Yeah, I didn't. Save, I didn't save any cards. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> and you at least have that hero power, which helps. I have. Yeah. You know, yeah. I deal one damage every turn. <laughs> yeah. I can literally so only attack with me. one minion on the board. Too. What'd you say? I can only attack with this haunted creeper. Yeah. The other things don't have Everything any attack. Else is zero. <laughs> But death rattles are such a good defense against area attacks. Yeah. It's my whole plan, my master plan, so very slowly win. Oh no. Ah. Haha. -ha. Take that. No taunt. That for was you. gonna be good too. Yeah, that would have been really awesome for you. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, um, this is why, you know, I, this is part of the reason why I think, like, the project of generating games is interesting, because you generate a game and then someone plays it, and you can, like, evaluate how they do when they play it, or what, you know, whether they're meeting the constraints that you had in mind. Um, so have you gotten to the point where there's, like, a, a complete game where someone can actually play through it, or you're still, like, not at yet. the initial stages? Yeah, this is, uh, it's all very, uh, you know, kind of, academic in nature where it's like yeah get the ideas super right before building stuff and I it's it's at least now to the point where I'm very anxious to be building stuff and um, I have a plan at least I, I have uh, the current the current plan right now is to build something that's like exciting to me from a PL nerd standpoint uh, like programming languages nerd standpoint which is mm -hmm. like 
um, doing static analysis over a bunch of game rules and basically just writing a system that can look at game rules and um, give you, like, tell you everything it knows about them, um, give you a big brain dump of like facts about um, the game that you described. Yeah, and that's that's really cool. And I definitely like I don't know the idea of something generating that to like a point where you could like generate a playable game seems extremely challenging. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's really funny. I'm sorry. That's fine. It's fine. It's just that it happened both it's times. I know. I know. I'm the same spell, too. Oh, no. What am I going to do? Yeah, we're going to do that. <laughs> Slowly. I don't have a ton of anymore, so you can actually hit me. No, oh, this isn't useful. Unless it... One of them gives you cards. I think it's the other mana crystal one. Gives you cards when you're... Yeah, and like draw a card or whatever. Yeah, when you're already full. I knew it. Go right for my face. Um, do that. Yeah. <laughs> I literally <laughs> This game is ridiculous. This is the most ridiculous. It's like the longest basic card game I've played, especially because I should have been dead so many turns ago. Yeah. Just by the skin of my teeth, I managed to draw cards that let me stay alive. Right, right. And I. Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like these decks just have so many minions that are. um really like low attack yeah. like it's hard to do the damage dark, but, yeah but then you just like killed them very easily um yeah. oh man <laughs> <laughs> Tiny little silverback patriarch can no, cannot do one damage. One damage? Any of your taunts. I feel like we must be breaking some kind of record for like the world's longest like Hearthstone game. <laughs> I don't I, I've played longer games than this, but they I mean, have you have you ever been milled? Do you know this term? Yeah, I know the term. I haven't actually been milled. Um but because I, when I played Wilkie, I asked him if he was going to play his Mill Rogue deck, and he was like, oh, no, God. terrible. <laughs> yeah, um, they're kind of evil. Um, but yeah, sometimes I just, like, without intentionally any either side playing a Mill deck, just go on for so long. Like, people have so many taunts and heals and um, other means of, like, staying alive for a long time that they just exhaust each other's decks. Yeah. Let's see, I've got seven and you've got eight. <laughs> Who's this thing? Um, his death Arcane. rattle adds three copies of arcane yeah. missiles to my hand, mm -hmm. which I kind of feel like I need. Yeah. Because <laughs> I have no way to do a decent amount of damage. Um, yeah, this is really funny. This whole, I feel like this mage deck is built very defensively. Oh yeah, there's a ton of... Um... Is this, wait, this isn't basic though, this is, because you have a, or is there a yeah, he's, legendary in the basic? He, yeah, there's a legendary oh. in the basic, it's like oh, wow, one of I didn't the last cards you get. Huh. Um, and it's pretty awesome. Um, I don't know what I wanted to. Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh yeah, you should have you should have been doing that. I should have been doing that the whole time. <laughs> I, I, I realize that, that now. And I'm yeah, like, like oh. as a mage, you can you can do some fun things with. Uh... I just thought I would slowly chip away at you until yeah. I won. But... It's good. It's good. It gave us a long time to chat. <laughs> but I feel like at this point, I'm running out of questions. Um... Because I'm. Running out, you're running out of um, health as well. Oh yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't. You didn't respond. I, I went to do it at the last second, it wouldn't let me. Yeah. So thank you for playing with me and talking yeah, about your you. awesome research. Thanks. Um, I think I have a few links I want to ask you for, but sure. I will do that later. And um, yeah, if anyone wants to be on Hackers and Hearthstone and talk about their cool research they do, just drop me a DM on Twitter. My DMs are open and you can see the link below and I will provide some links to some of the things Chris talked about below as well. And Yay. thank you.